Hi, I have a, my name is H. Doug Matsuok, Ahoy Gorilla Video Hui. I have a couple of questions regarding my ongoing concerns about the Thomas Square uh, situation. I'm not so much against the uh, changes going on, but it's transfer from the uh, Parks Department in, into the Department of Enterprise Services, which you run. Um, under the Parks Department, it falls under the uh, city and county ordinance making process. And I'm afraid of a couple of things. One is that the uh, First Amendment rights that accompany public parks disappear when it goes into the Department of Enterprise Services. Uh, for instance, there's no pamphleting and whatnot at the Blaisdell. And I attended uh, the public uh, hearings that you and uh, Mr. Dacus, Chris Dacus uh, presented. And you said, well, the rule, you'd have to go through a rule process, Hawaii, a Honolulu Administrative Rules Hearing. So what I did is I called, I, I actually emailed my, uh, the council members, the mayor's office, for the rules uh, concerning uh, the Blaisdell Center, Waikiki Shell, and the golf courses. And they didn't get back to me. And in fact, I had a day off today, so I went to City Hall and asked them, I'd like to see the Honolulu administrative rules that, co that cover uh, um, the Blaisdell and that sort of thing. And they referred me to customer services, so I went to the next building. They referred me to the Department of Enterprise Services, so I ended up in your office. And while they were in back looking for the Honolulu administrative rules for Blaisdell Center, you walked in. <laughs> so I asked you, where are the rules? And you said, well, there aren't any that cover um, the Blaisdell Center. So I'm wonder. I have two questions. One is, you know, I know that uh, bringing food in to the Blaisdell Center of the Shell is forbidden. I know pamphleting and that kind of stuff is forbidden. So I was trying to find where where this is. It's not in the ordinances. It's not in the rules. It's under. I, I looked on the web and it's under something called the House Rules. The house rules don't cite any ordinance. They don't cite statute. So my two questions are, how does the public get involved to ensure First Amendment rights at Thomas Square after it goes to the Department of Enterprise Services? And what happens if I now violate these house rules? What if I bring food into the shell? What if I pamphlet at the Blaisdell? What, what am I breaking? And uh, what is the what is the penalty for doing that? Okay, um, I'm you know I'm glad you I'm glad you found that. And yes, when I got back to my office, Doug was in there, and I was able to save everybody a little time to say no, there aren't any rules for um, for Thomas Square in the shell, and and or excuse me for Blaisdell in the shell, and and, and golf, and and in fact the zoo. Um, on, honestly, it is a I believe it's a it's a shortcoming. Um, the department in previous years has operated uh, with its fees and its procedures in ordinance and, and not in rules. Um, the, and it is absolutely a shortcoming and uh, that the department in previous years didn't adopt rules specific to the use of, of Blaisdell and instead has been operating on what, what you saw there as, and what's called really in quotation marks, um, house rules. Now I can tell you that over, um, the house rules in the almost two years that I've been there um, haven't been challenged. I don't know if they had been in the past. Uh, I know when it has come up periodically that um, HPD has been willing to enforce against it. I don't know that what basis that they have for doing that. I know that the department has been, um, it's been suggested to the department that it needs to develop rules especially for the use of the Blaisdell Center. That's, that is my intention. My intention really is to move the Thomas Square rulemaking through the process first, uh, because that's gonna be much simpler than it is gonna be, I think, for Blaisdell, especially with the Blaisdell campus changing in over the next, hopefully, four years or so. So um, house rules are the ones that we're operating under. To answer the last part of your question, uh, what would happen if you broke one of them? I got to say, I honestly don't know. I'm not challenging you to do it, but I, I honestly don't know, and I, I don't know what basis um, Corporation Council would stand on. Mike, Mike, Mike. 
And the other question is, how does the public make sure that First Amendment rights are upheld in Thomas Square after its transfer out of uh, Parks and Recreation to the Department of Enterprise Services? That'll be through, uh, I think, two processes. One will be the rulemaking process, uh, which we intend to do sometime in the next um, six months. I think you've become familiar with the process. It requires 30 days notice, public hearing. We present our, our uh, proposed rules. Uh, any, any aspect of the rule that is look, substantively challenged, uh, we have to go back and readdress. Well, you don't have to because it, there's no oversight by the council. There's no oversight by any public elected official. You decide whether a rule gets put in place or not. It, and that's the problem I have. And I know, you know. I understand you're saying, you know, I mean, not just me, but we were all on the, perhaps the, if their sides, we're all on the city side of the rulemaking process. But, yeah. uh, but honestly, the, the oversight and the watchdog in the rulemaking process is, is our, are our attorneys, and it is corporation counsel. It's what is reasonable, what is not, and ultimately uh, the mayor has to sign off on it too. So there's a variety. But the other aspect is gonna be um, uh, the council because I suspect that um, I expect that we'll go be coming to the council with a schedule of proposed fees because that's all of our fees are set by ordinance and so we'd expect to do it the same way. And that's a little longer process. That's a, probably a minimum of three months, probably more likely longer. And we'd have multiple opportunities for committee input. Okay. 